What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we're going to be discussing a pretty hot button issue within Destiny 2 right now, and that is the Mita Multi-Tool Exotic Scout Rifle. Is this weapon overpowered in PvP? Well, we're going to discuss it. We're going to look at both angles, discussing some reasons why it may indeed be overpowered, and also discussing several reasons why it also may not be. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what I would change about this weapon, if anything, to make it more balanced. Now, for whatever reason, when you discuss balancing weapons in video games, some people get really heated. We're less than a minute in, and I guarantee some people are out there disliking and already writing paragraph-long comments with a lot of capital letters. Don't be one of those people. Contribute to the discussion, disagree with me all you want, but be respectful to everyone around you. People are going to have different gameplay experiences. Everyone's time in Destiny 2 is going to be different, so they're going to view this weapon drastically different depending on what they personally have experienced. And it's best if we can pool our knowledge and come to an overall best solution that hopefully Bungie can implement for the betterment of the majority of players. And so let's get started. The Mida Multi-Tool. Let's talk about, because I think a lot of people, a lot of people are on the bandwagon of this thing is overpowered. I think that's what I see a lot of people talking about. Um, Trials of the Nine just came out and that thing is heavily, heavily used there. Like it's just everywhere. And so a lot of people are saying, look, I'm versing this thing absolutely nonstop. It's clearly the best option. It's clearly overpowered. Bungie needs to do something about it. So let's actually first discuss a different angle. Let's discuss some reasons why it may not be overpowered, and then we'll talk about why it may be. So reason number one why this thing may not be that overpowered is that it's a very good scout rifle, and you're using it in a map, especially the Eternity map for Trials of the Nine, where scout rifles are just the de facto best choice. That map has a ton of extremely long sight lines. So a scout rifle period, not necessarily the Mida, but any scout rifle is going to be quite effective. The Mida is just a very, very good scout rifle. So it kind of makes sense that you're seeing this weapon a ton in that map. If it was a much closer range map where they didn't have scout rifle sight lines, I would imagine you would see way less Midas, and therefore you could argue that it wouldn't even really be an issue. People would be saying, you know, the origin story auto rifle w would be overpowered, or whatever else would be overpowered, whatever other weapon that would be seeing more play with a very different map. So that could absolutely be a factor here. Another factor in why you're seeing the Mida multi-tool just so much is that it's a very, very good scout rifle, that you have a 100% chance of getting. If you do the quest line to go out and get the Mida multi-tool, which to be honest really isn't that difficult, it's a little time consuming uh, if you have to you know, go out and get a bunch of loot to dismantle the scout rifles, but aside from that, you do the quest line and at the end of it, you are given a Mida multi-tool 100% of the time. This is important because, let's say another good weapon is the Uriel's Gift Auto rifle. It's a legendary Omelon auto rifle that you do not have a 100% chance of getting. It is just a random drop within the game. So, if I was to say to you guys, the best gun in the game is the Uriel's Gift. Everyone out there, everyone watching this video, go get that weapon. Well, some of you would already have it. Some of you would get lucky in the next, you know, hour or so and get it from a drop. And some of you would just be screwed. In fact, a lot of you would just be screwed because there's not a 100% chance to get it. You are just randomly awarded that weapon. So you really have no control over whether or not you're going to be able to achieve the goal of acquiring the Uriel's Gift. It's really the luck of the draw. And so that's another reason the Mida is just everywhere. It's a very good gun, and it's a good gun that your friends can say, oh dude, go out and get the Mida, and you can do something, and you can 100% get it at the end of the day. So that's another reason why the Mida is just everywhere. It has a 100% drop rate. Also, one more point for the Mida maybe not being super overpowered is that it's not incredibly oppressive to play against. It can be very annoying to play against, don't get me wrong, but comparing it to, and any of you guys from Destiny 1 I'm sure would agree, 
the year one thorn when that thing was really overpowered for way too long and it took Bungie forever to nerf it that was a nightmare and that thing was just so clearly the best weapon to use in so many scenarios that it pushed most other weapons just completely out of the picture and it was just such an oppressive weapon to play against the Mita compared to that is not quite as bad However, let's switch gears here and talk about some of the reasons why the Mita multi-tool may indeed be just overpowered. Number one, it is pushing a lot of the competition completely out of the way. Other scout rifles, like why would you use an other scout rifle? Now of course there is a few scenarios and some of you watching may be like, well I have this legendary scout rifle that I absolutely love, I like it better than the Mita, and that's totally fine, that's totally fine. Especially if you're running an energy scout rifle, like you can have a different setup in that regard. But when you're actually 1v1ing a skilled Mita player, not a scrub Mita player that you got in your random matchmaking, but a skilled Mita player, you are very likely to lose that engagement. And that's because the Mita produces so much flinch when it hits you. And if you're using a scout rifle that doesn't do that, most scout rifles don't have high caliber rounds and are as good as the Mita. So when you're 1v1ing a Mita with another scout rifle, you are very likely to lose that engagement because you are flinching a ton and they are flinching nowhere near as much. And you know what? It's not just other scout rifles. Yesterday, I was trying to utilize the new Trials of Osiris Pulse Rifle. It's a slow shooting, high damaging pulse rifle. And I just felt completely outgunned when versing mighty users. Like I would still get kills, but it just felt so oppressive to play against. With that flinch, like I'm just thrown off of my bursts and it just felt like I was completely outmatched by this gun. And that is not good. The Trials Pulse is actually a pretty good weapon, but whenever you verse someone that is just causing you so much flinch and has such a good consistent weapon, you just feel like you're using a nerf gun, a water gun, compared to what they're using. And that is definitely a little bit of a sign that it may be overpowered. That's completely pushing these other weapon options out of the picture. Like if you're long range and you want to engage people from long range sight lines and you don't have a Mita multi-tool, you feel disadvantaged. You're fighting from the bottom. Like you're really up against it in those gunfights. You have to have a lot of skill. You have to have a lot of gun skill and hope the Mighty user has nowhere near as much gun skill as you to win those engagements. And that's not great. Again, that's a sign that this weapon may be overpowered that's pushing out so many other options when it comes to long range weapons. And yet another potential problem with this weapon is the new weapon system entirely. In Destiny 1, the Mighty Multitool was still extremely good, but it suffered a lot more from its dedication to long range with its high zoom optic and all of that stuff because you really could only use it in those longer range engagements because your secondary weapon would be a shotgun or a snipe rifle or a sidearm, something you wouldn't even necessarily have ammunition for. But now in Destiny 2, you can run the Mita and then an auto rifle and that auto rifle is going to cover you pretty much everywhere else so it's a lot easier to get away with running the Mita which is dedicated to long range and then anytime you have a long range engagement whip it out and destroy people it's so much easier to justify running this Mita and so at the end of the day we certainly have a couple of reasons for both we have extremely legitimate concerns by many people as to why the Mita multi-tool is overpowered in Destiny 2. It's pushing out the competition, it's extremely oppressive to play against, it's the right choice in pretty much any map that has long range sight lines, but also we have some legitimate concerns from people who don't want to see every exotic nerfed into the ground, which honestly, like to feel these people's concerns, that was the case in Destiny 1 way too much. And that's why a lot of people are very hesitant, right? A lot of people have already kind of gotten upset at me that I even dare talk about this issue because in Destiny 1, you'd even bring up that a gun may be overpowered and Bungie would nerf it into the ground. And that's just not fun. Destiny 2's PvP is actually pretty decently balanced, especially compared to Destiny 1's PvP. You have a lot of choices that you can legitimately run in D2's PvP and when you start bringing up that guns are overpowered, you're very concerned that, you know, Bungie nerfs scout rifles in general would be horrible, but 
even the mighty multi-tool into the ground, then you have this exotic weapon that's just useless, and that's not great. But hopefully, we can have this discussion and Bungie can implement a solution, one that I'm going to suggest in a bit, that will tame down the Mida, but not completely destroy it, not completely nerf it into the ground. Because at the end of the day, even though there are arguments pointing towards the Mida not being overpowered, I have to say its oppressiveness to play against, and again the fact that it's just pushing out the competition, is a little bit too much. Something minor needs to be done. What I would recommend, personally, is these two very simple solutions, very minor solutions. Solution number one, calm down or perhaps even take away the added flinch the Mida multi-tool gets. If you replaced high caliber rounds with a different kind of rounds, armor piercing rounds, you would have a much more balanced gun. A gun that is still a very, very good, accurate scout rifle, but that didn't feel so oppressive to play against because you're losing so many 1v1s against that thing because it does cause so much flinch. However, the counter argument to this is that well, the Mida causes flinch. That's why it's an exotic weapon. That's why it's so good. So maybe just tone down the flinch a little bit. Calm down the flinch by 20%, and then you're gonna have a gun that's still causing a little bit more flinch than usual, but isn't as completely insane as it is right now. Now, solution number two is to calm down the rate of fire just a tad. Lower the Mida's rate of fire by something like 5%. A very, very small, barely noticeable difference, but if you and another person with a scout rifle in the same damage archetype will start shooting at the exact same time, the Mida should lose out if everyone lands all their shots because it has a tiny bit slower rate of fire. However, that's very unlikely to happen, and you still maintain a very powerful, high-flinching exotic scout rifle. You just dial back its killing potential a little bit and give a little bit of an advantage to using other legendary scout rifles so that hopefully you will see some more diversity in those long-range maps like we have in Trials of the Nine right now. There's also a few other minor things you could do. Calm down its handling so it aims down sights maybe a little bit slower. Just something else to kind of take its teeth away just a little bit. Keep the spirit of this gun. Keep the killing potential of this gun. By all means, I'm not trying to make the Mida a bad weapon or a weapon that's not usable. I want the Mida to be one of your top choices when deciding what scout rifle to use but I want to make sure that it's not your only choice, as it really seems to be right now. Now there's also one more thing you could do. You don't actually have to nerf anything to balance a weapon. And this is a concept, frankly, Bungie had a hard time of grasping in Destiny 1. You can actually just buff this weapon's direct competitors. In this case, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to buff the slow shooting pulse rifles. I see almost no slow shooting pulse rifles. I see almost no pulse rifles in PvP right now. It seems to be scout rifles and 450 rounds per minute auto rifles. Giving a buff to pulse rifles, making them more viable, would naturally add more competition to scout rifles in general and the Mida multi-tool. And then you are going to naturally just see more people using other weapons and the Mida's usage kind of calm down a little bit. And I think that solution would probably have a lot of people watching say, yeah, that, that actually sounds good because again, pulse rifles, they're very sparingly used and they could use a little bit of help right now. They seem to be only viable at the same range as auto rifles are viable and why wouldn't you just use an auto rifle? They kill extremely fast in Destiny right now. So I think giving pulse rifles some love could naturally kind of lower down the Midas usage. And so guys, that's it for the video. And if you watch this video going, you know what? These are some good ideas. I hope they get implemented. Well, don't just continue on with your day. Help this video gain some traction. Like the video, share the video, tell a friend, so that hopefully Bungie will come and see it and potentially even implement these ideas. 
Now guys, if you want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.